What's up? Welcome back to the Metalhead Car Show. A few weeks ago, I did a video on songs Iron Maiden will never play again, and you guys seem to like it. So today we're doing part two of six more songs I see Iron Maiden never playing again. And if this video does well again, we'll do part three and we'll cap it at three because I don't want to list off every single song Maiden's never going to play again. So, same rules as last time. If the song's never been played live at all, it doesn't count. And we're not going to count obvious songs like Angel the Gambler or Burning Ambition. So, let's get right into it. Starting off with Killers. Now this one's going to be a disappointing one for a lot of people, because let's be honest, this song is awesome. Killers was obviously the title track of the second album, Killers. The reason why it's making the list isn't because it isn't a strong song or isn't a good song. It is wicked. It's definitely one of the best Paul Diano era songs Baden's ever done. But I'm saying it's kind of out for three reasons. One, it is Paul Diano's song. If Maiden plays it, Maiden does have to pay him for royalties since Paul Diano did write it. Two, Bruce Dickinson isn't a huge fan of a lot of Paul Diano stuff, which is why you really only kind of see Iron Maiden in the set lists. And three, Iron Maiden has had a lot of chances to pull the song back out. Now, they did play it in 1980, 1981, uh, the Number of the Beast tour and maybe on the Peace of Mind tour. But after that, they dropped it until 1988, played through the whole Seven Sun tour, dropped it again until 1999. <laughs> played on the Ed Hunter tour, they haven't played it since. Since 99, I feel like Maiden's had the opportunity to play it on like the Give Me Ed Till I'm Dead tour, the Eddie Ripped Up the World tour, perhaps even the second half of the Summer Back in Time tour. Like they've had their chances and they just haven't done it. And because this song has been pulled out on retrospective tours or tours where it would have fit, I think it's gone forever. Next up, and go back to No Prayer for the Dying, Public Enema number one. This is a fun song, and strangely it's one of the very few No Prayer for the Dying songs where you can actually find good quality footage of it. But Public Enemy Number 1 was played through the whole No Prayer on the Road tour back in 1990 and 1991. And despite being one of the couple No Prayer for the Dying songs that stuck around through the whole tour, it hasn't been pulled out since. Now No Prayer for the Dying is a odd album, because it's the only album in which in the past like 15 years Maiden's pulled nothing out from it. The last time Iron Maiden did No Prayer for the Dying song was in 2003 on the Gimme Edge Time Dead Tour, and they opened the encore with Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. Which yes, is a Bruce Dickinson song, I know but it was on that album, so I'm bringing it up. So I kind of get the feeling that No Prayer for the Dying is kind of nobody in the band's favorite album, and if they were going to go back and pull out a No Prayer song, they'd have to do something like Bring Your Daughter to the Sauter or Tail Gunner to just to make sure people are super happy. And since Public Enema at number one isn't the most loved song of the album, which is a shame because it's awesome and it's a lot of fun, I think it's gone for good. Next up, Still Life. Life's kind of an odd song, or at least it has an odd history. Now it came out in 1983 on the Peace of Mind album, it's one of the very few songs written by Dave Murray, and it feels like it never really connected live. When it was played on the World Peace Tour in 1983, it wasn't played through the whole tour, it was eventually dropped from the set list, but it was pulled back out in 1988, the 7th tour of the 7th tour, and even then, it wasn't played the whole tour, and it was eventually dropped. Now, we've said in the past that Maiden has had multiple tours where they gave the Peace of Mind album a lot of love and a lot of time, despite, yes, I know it hasn't got a retrospective tour directly, but it has got its love. And seeing as though it's never been pulled back out, and it didn't even make it through the two tours it was played, I think this song is gone for good. Next up, and kind of a more modern song, but The Red and the Black. Now, The Red and the Black came out in the 2015 Book of Souls album, and it was played through the entire Book of Souls tour in 2016 and 2017. It's one of the longest songs Maiden's ever written. It has very cool guitar harmony in it, done by Yannick Gears and Adrian Smith.
which is kind of a really cool combo considering both guitars play so differently, and the chorus was purpose-built to have crowd interaction. So nothing bad to say, right? Well, here's the issue. Despite I would love to hear this played live, and like, I would love to see Iron Maiden finish playing Iron Maiden. They all leave the stage, the lights go down for a minute. Steve just comes out and starts playing the intro to Red the Black, and that's just how they jump into the encore. I think that'd be super cool. But I think it's gone for good for kind of two reasons. One, it's length. I think if Iron Maiden were to dedicate over 13 minutes of a song in a set list, and it wasn't Ancient Mariner, fans would lose it. Along with that, as much as I think this is a super solid song and it's one of the best songs of the album, it's probably in the top 10 for like post-reunion songs, it doesn't go down well live. Yeah, for the first half of the song, you have lyrics, you have choruses, the fans are fairly engaged in the song. But during that harmony part that goes on for truly a little while, what happens is the crowd starts to die. Everyone starts standing there because nothing new has happened for a little while with all these instrumental parts going on, which I love. But as much as I love it, I was catching myself just kind of standing there just like this. Which isn't super entertaining for the crowd or the band. So despite I think this song is awesome and honestly the best song on this whole list, I think it's gone for good. Next up, Charlotte the Harlot. How can I say this? Because Charlotte the Harlot, Maiden's wrote so many songs about her. Let's be real, Maiden hasn't played any of the songs about her for a long time. Unfortunately, that part's true. Maiden has written a handful of songs about Charlotte, and they haven't really played any for a long time. If you don't know who Charlotte is, Charlotte's a lady of the evening the members of Iron Maiden were associated with for a brief period of time. You can look more into it. But the four songs that are known to be Charlotte songs are Twilight Zone, 22 Keisha Avenue, Hooks in You, and Charlotte the Harlot. The last time Charlotte the Harlot was played was actually in 2005. It was playing the first two shows of the Eddie Ripped Up the World Tour, and then it was dropped. Why? Well, I don't think they were loving it. As I said, Bruce Dickinson isn't the biggest fan of the Paul Diano songs, and despite that set list was primarily Paul Diano songs, it was the only one that was dropped. Adding to that, there's just a few guitar parts that are only written for two guitars, so you have scenes like this. <laughs> And despite Yannick appears to be an absolute sweetheart and actually offered to step out of Maiden just so Adrian could rejoin the band in 1999, I don't think this went well. <laughs> I think this song worked for Iron Maiden when it was just two guitarists, but I think now with how the band is and how many people are in it, it just doesn't work anymore. But I'm gonna say Char the Harlot is gone for good. Last one on the list, When Two Worlds Collide. <laughs> This is basically like an odd pick because there's a lot of Blaze Bailey songs and a lot more songs I can pick other than this one. But I think the Blaze era is still kind of a weird one for a lot of Maiden fans. There are a lot of Maiden fans who do love that era and are super supportive of Blaze. But there are still a lot of Maiden fans who A, haven't even discovered it yet, or B, really aren't into Blaze's vocals. So if Maiden is going to pull a song out from that, it is going to be Clansman, Sign of the Cross, Man of the Edge, Future Real, Lord of the Flies. They're not going to go super weird. And when it came out as being played on every single show on the tour, I wouldn't have called it a weird song, but keep in mind that was like 26 years ago. So at this point, right now, I am going to consider it kind of a weird, obscure song for Maiden's uh, live catalog. And honestly, I don't see it ever coming back out. So that's six songs I see Iron Maiden never playing again. But I want to know, what do you think? Do you agree with me on these six songs? And if you did comment on the first video, let me know in the comments what songs you think are gone for good. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed what you've seen. I tend to post on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and I'll see you later.